Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Arbor this morning. And on behalf of the members here and Pastor Danny Daniels, who is out sick today, I'm not Danny Daniels, we'd like to welcome you here. Uh, what we'd like to do is uh, start out with a word of prayer and uh, we'll, let's go to the Lord. God is good? And all the time? Let's join together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day you've given to us. A day in which you put joy into our hearts. For we're here to worship you this morning. And we're here to worship you, listening to and hearing the young children present your word. And what a joy it is that we can have little ones who will express their love for you and sing their hearts out for you. Lord, we pray that you will bless them. May your spirit be in front of them and guide them. And may you embolden them to boldly remember their lines and preach the word. Lord, may you open our hearts and our ears this morning that we can receive and hear your word. But most of all, Lord, we pray that this worship will be pleasing to you. Be with us throughout this production. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, this is a production that the kids have been working on since September. And they come down every Friday night and they practice for about two hours. And the children who are up here with uh, parts, speaking parts, they come on Sunday mornings and they practice for about three hours. And this has been going on since September. Well, I'm sorry, not September. This has been going on since February. My wife's been doing this for about 37 years, so I'm a little mixed up with that. So, But they've been working hard, and they're encouraged when you encourage them. So if you feel like clapping or if you feel like, you know, acknowledging them, that just encourages them because it's pretty tough. You know, we've got some of the kids up here that are about a couple of them are two years old. And uh, it takes a lot to stand before a crowd. The, the presentation that they're presenting to you this morning is uh, Danny and the Shacks. And it basically goes back to a time when the Israelis were captured by the Babylonians. And the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, was just a real brute. I mean, this guy was just in love with himself. He saw a gold headpiece that he just fell in love with. And he said, I'm going to make one that blow everybody away, 60 by 60 by 6. And this gold statue of himself that he made, as most dictators are, he was in love with himself. He required everybody to bow down and worship it. Well, you had Daniel, who comes along when they were captured, and what the Babylonians did was they took the best of the Israeli young men, and they wanted to teach them in the ways of Babylon. They would educate them and everything else. And they were also required to eat Babylonian food because naturally that was so much better. Well, Daniel couldn't do that because he served the Lord our God. His faith was strong. Is your faith strong? Would you be able to stand up to your captors and say politely, I can't do that. I'm going to honor God. And as a result, he honored God. And he was made all the stronger. And they, and they showed that he grew way better because the jailer was afraid that he'd be killed if he didn't grow like the other ones did, but he grew more. And as a result, Nebuchadnezzar made him in charge of everything, and he got Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of other things too. And that's when the play where you're going to see that their faith, that they stand for God. Imagine if you was Meshach, Meshach, or Abednego. What would you do? Would your faith be strong enough for you to stand for God, or do you have no faith at all? Well, the children through the musical this morning that they're going to present are going to tell you this story. Amen? So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Danny and the Shacks.
we are getting ahead of the story. Just who will Danny and his friends bow to? In our story, some will face choices where they must physically bow. Others will choose they will follow, serve, and worship. You will see Danny and his friends face life or death decisions in the arena, the fire, and the dead. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. Danny and his friends had arrived in Babylon, having been captured by the Babylonians. And they soon realized the life in Babylon was very, very different than life in Israel. Well, aren't you the strongest, best captives I've ever seen? Good for you. We are so glad to have you here in Babylon. This is Helga, and she will give you a tour of our royal weight room where you will prepare for the Babylonian warrior challenge. What do you say, warriors? Let's go! Challenge? What challenge? You'll love it. Helga will tell you all about it. I have to finish my workout. Time for lunges. Carry on, warriors. Babylon strong. Here in Babylon, we work our bodies to their fullest capacity. We are the best. Now you will be the best. But first, it looks like you need to train before you can train. Danny was intrigued by the idea of a physical fitness challenge. In his mind, he pictured himself flying through the courts, catching barbells left and right as they were being thrown at him. Take the Although, that's not exactly Is someone else on top? Let me guess. Ugh, so weird. That's very heavy. I can't lift that. He's 
said it, he said it, you know the drill. One, two, three, four, five. Huh? We do jumping jacks anytime someone says the word hand. One, two, three, four, five. You'll get it. We have a bunch of workout words. It keeps things exciting. Just wait till someone says it. Don't say it. The king assigned them a daily ration of food from his own kitchen. They were to be trained for three years. And after that, they were to enter the king's service. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food given to them by the king. He asked for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Helga, I would like to respectfully ask that my friends and I not be required to eat the king's food. We have top chefs cooking for us day and night. Best food in Babylon. Why in the world would you ask that? I... I can't help but notice, Helga. One, two, three, four, five. That you're still lifting weights. Yep, gotta keep that heart rate up. She never stops working out. She's our top warrior. Babylon Shaw. As you know, we are Israelites. That's the word! Israelites, Israelites, punch, two, three, four, run, two, three, four, five. Simply be allowed to eat vegetables and drink water for the next 10 days? That's a sure way to lose the competition. Gotta have protein. Even so, we are still following the rules of the Most High God. Just give us 10 days and then see how we do. I don't know. If King Nebuchadnezzar is looking weak at the competition, he's gonna punish me. Don't worry, our God won't let us down. He keeps, he keeps his promises and we depend on him. Ten days passed, and it was time for the competition.
over, and Danny and the Shacks were crowned the winners. They determined to give God all the glory for their victory. I have got to say, those vegetables did not let you down. How did you do it? It's most high. He made us strong. Whatever. Back to business. As Babylonians, you will need new names. From now on, you will be Shadrach, Meshach, and you, Abednego. Back to push-ups. Meanwhile, King Ned was very impressed that Danny and his friends had won the Babylonian Warrior Challenge. Babylon strong! I am very impressed with you, Israelites. I can't imagine. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, how you did it. Will you be my finest people in the Babylonian Warrior Challenge? Babylon strong! You easily beat the obstacle course, even without eating the chef's amazing foods. Tell me your names again. I'm Shadrach. I'm Misha. And, and I'm, I'm just going to call you the Shacks. I like it. Would you like to be regular competitors in the challenge? You have the strength that it takes. Our, our, our strength comes from Yahweh, the most high God. And we will live and serve here. Please allow us to continue to honor our God for what we choose to do. King Nebuchadnezzar and Danny and his friends continue to quietly serve God and eat the food that they knew they would. In fact, three years later, they were stronger and healthier. Even when it was unpopular. Even when it seemed the wisest choice was to eat the king's food so they could be strong. And God blessed them as they lived in a foreign land. It's easier said than done to stay true to who you know you are. It's easier said than done to be in the world but not forget your call. One decision can change everything and set the course of your life. Will you look to God or go?
Time in Babylon went by, as time does, and Danny and the Shacks adjusted to their new life. Danny and his friends prayed and asked God for wisdom. Above all, they, they trusted God that he would protect them. Soon, Danny was placed in a high position and sent off to oversee operations in various parts of the land. The king appointed the Shacks over a province in Babylon. One day, the king had a big announcement. What a great king I am. Look at all that I have accomplished. All praise and glory go to me. Just wait till you see what I have built. A 90-foot golden? golden statue of our favorite person, me. All were informed that when the beat dropped, everyone would be required to fall down and worship the golden statue. Whoever would not would be thrown into a furnace of a blazing fire. But the shacks had a big problem. They knew they couldn't bow down to anyone but God. No way we're riding hot souls, right? Of course not. We can't. One, two, three, four, five. Shack, shacky, shackster. I know you have your own beliefs, but you do realize what needs to happen here, right? I mean, it's going to be really obvious if everyone is bowing to the statue and you three aren't. Perhaps the king won't mind. He loves us. Maybe he'll make an exception. The shacks thought that the king might change his mind. What if he decided that no one should bow down to the statue? If he could just imagine. To my loyal Babylonians, I was just talking to my very best friends, the shacks, and they have reminded me that there is only one God. So I am taking down the statue, and we will all worship the one true God. By now, that's not what happened. This is what happened. If anyone does not bow to the statue of me, I want them thrown into a fiery hot furnace immediately. You're not thinking this through, Shacky. This king that respects your beliefs. I know for a fact that your God has given the Babylonian war your time. Babylon strong! Many people are impressed with God. But just because a person is impressed doesn't mean their life has changed. We don't want to lose you. You will be no use to your God after you've been toasted. If you'll make just this one compromise, you'll be able to keep serving God for a long, long time. It's easy to compromise, and it is easy to get caught up in worshiping other things. But we must worship the one true God. won't bow. Simple as that.
Tall, but some of the Babylonians were not too happy about the way things turned out. Helga brought the matter up with the king the following day, while they were all planking. Oh, king, your royal muscliness, did you notice that your favorite Hebrews conveniently forgot to bow when the beat dropped at the ceremony? Those cool cats? The shacks? Are you sure? They must still be loyal to their god. After all, they are Israelites. The nerve, how ungrateful. Even after I put them in charge of the provinces here in Babylon, bring them here. And so the shafts were brought before King Neb and given one more chance. I will give you one more chance to bow down to the statue of me. But if you do not, you will immediately be thrown into the fire. Phoebe, tell them about the fire. Oh, it is so hot, King. in three seconds, and pizza in five. Let's just say you don't want to stand anywhere near it. Much less in it. <laughs> I crack myself up. Our God will deliver us from the fire, and even if he doesn't, he will still be more powerful than all your gods. We stand firm. We will not serve the statue or your gods. Never. Pity. I really liked you, Shax.
way. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought out of the fire, and the fire had not burned any part of them. Once again, King Neb was very impressed that God had saved them from the fiery furnace. He said, Praise be to the God of the Shacks, who has sent the, his angel to rescue them. They were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any other god but their own. Therefore, I decree that if anyone says anything bad about their god, they will be forced to do 1,000 burpees and 5 million sit-ups. There is no other God like theirs. And King Neb promoted the shacks and sent them off to lead it in the provinces of Babylon. interested in music so he converted the weight room into a palace recording studio he loved to jam with the other musicians especially Danny in fact he planned to put Danny in charge over the whole kingdom soon Danny would be the second most powerful musician in the land the other musicians did not like that he's a foreigner and he's going to rule over us he doesn't even practice piano every day for seven hours can you imagine I'm practicing my vocalizing and warming up like every second me 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 the other leaders were jealous that Danny was so respected, so they decided to trick the king into making a law that they knew Danny wouldn't follow. Let's convince the king to make a decree that all the people in the land have to pray to him every day for 30 days. It'll be a sign of their loyalty. Perfect. And if they don't? Throw them in the lion's den. The lion's den! So they approached the king. And just in case King Darius realized that it was a trap for Danny, he wrote in a clause and a law would go into effect immediately and could never be changed. But Danny continued to pray to God three times a day with his window open for all to see. God, I praise you. You are the one and only true God. My life is always in your hands. Please guide me today as I seek to follow your will and serve you. Amen. Right away, the jealous musicians alerted the king to Danny's actions, and King Darius realized with horror they had no choice but to follow through on his decree and send Danny to the lion's den. I'm so sorry, Danny. I was tricked into making this decree. May your God, whom you faithfully serve, deliver you from this den of lions. It's all right, king. My God will continue to protect me. We'll jam again soon. You'll see. And Danny was thrown into a den of lions. <laughs>
At the first light of dawn, King Darius hurried to the lion's den and called out, Oh, Danny boy, friend, have you been eaten? May the king live forever. My God sent his angels, and they shut the mouths of the lions. I have not been hurt. Hot diggity dog, this calls for a saxophone celebration. <laughs> the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Danny out of the den. And when Danny was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in God. Danny trusted God in the lion's den. In faith, he believed the impossible. I started. Even when you are living in Babylon, you can still be in the presence of Almighty God. For better is one day in His presence than a thousand spent anywhere else.
God and join the truth the wicked. So the Lord our God has sent and shield the Lord gives favor and honor. No good thing that she is holds from those who walk is blameless. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. I'm blessed. She's blessed. You're blessed. She's blessed. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. I'm blessed. She's blessed. You're blessed. She's blessed. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. I'm blessed. She's blessed. You're blessed. She's blessed. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. I'm blessed. Better is one day. Better is one day. Maybe you're in your own Babylon, a difficult place where it is hard to feel like God is with you. Rest assured that he is near, and you can worship him no matter where you are. He will be with you in Babylon. He will be with you in the fire. He will be with you in the den. Look for where God is working. No matter how disastrous it may seem to us, God is always there in the middle of it. Even in the midst of difficult times in our life.
God is good. And all the time. What do you say? Do you think the kids did a great job? What do you think? You know, the kids just saying this isn't the end of the story. It isn't the end of the story. The book of Daniel that they took this play from is a book about prophecy. Daniel represents the church. In the future time, the church will not go through the tribulation. That's why Daniel wasn't up here with Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you're a Christian and you belong to the church of God, you will be protected. Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego, they represent Shadrach. You can give me a break. I went to public school. <laughs> they represent the 144,000 that will be going through the tribulation. God has that 144,000 chosen, and they will be protected. And yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that word through is key. God is with you. God was with them in the fire. Think about it. Nebuchadnezzar represents the Antichrist. He gives power to the gold statue of himself that you saw back here. The same way the Antichrist will give power to the beast in which all will be required to worship and bow before him. That's going to be a sad time, guys. So the question is, if you were Meshach, Meshach, or Abednego, they were tied up. And the king was so furious, he increased the fire, the heat, seven times. Those are some big problems. Do you have the faith to escape? But do you have the faith that they had to endure? Because they knew that they were going to be protected by God. And as Caden said, well, even if he doesn't pull us out, our God will still protect us. David Hawking tells a story of one of his members who she had gotten into her car after shopping. She rolled down her window. It was a very hot day, and a person came up with a gun and put it right to her head and said, give me your purse. What would you do? Just like as if you were in the fire. What problems do you have that are insurmountable? Well, she wasn't having a very good day to begin with. And she looked at the guy and said, go ahead and shoot. Huh? What? Go ahead. What? Whoa. And she said, look, I'm going to meet my God anyway, so now's as good a time as ever. Go ahead and shoot. But please make sure you don't miss because I don't want to have a lot of pain and suffering. The guy looked at her like she was crazy and ran off. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to work every time. But what would you do? Would you have the faith as was portrayed in the fire? Do you have the faith to endure? And more importantly, when Daniel, when he was ratted out basically by the Chaldeans who didn't want to see him succeed, and he had the king made the rule, anybody who went against the king was going to die. And the king didn't want to do it. You saw the king. Look, hey, you know what? I hope your God pulls you through it. Do you have the faith of Daniel to be in that lion's den and realize that God's hand of protection will protect you? no matter what happens. Amen? And we know the story. As the kids said, this isn't the end of the story. So what would you do if you were Daniel? What would you do if these were these three? God has given you a way out. God said, I will be with you. God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Follow me. Romans 10.8 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you must be saved. And everybody who God called, who Jesus called, he called publicly. If you will stand up for me before men, I will stand up for you for my father. If you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father. What are you going to do? If you truly want to accept God as your Lord and Savior and not be a Sunday bench warmer, then it requires you, as Jesus said, you must be born again. For no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born again. So as the kids said, this isn't the end of the story. They want to offer you this opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So when you're in the fire, God will be with you. When you're in the lion's den, God will protect you. And out throughout the day with your problems, God will see you through it. So if you want to accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, I'd like everybody to bow your head. And if this is the desire of your heart, because... With the heart we believe, with the mouth we confess. Repeat after this. Everyone bow your head. Dear Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, this opportunity to come before you and to confess my sins. And Lord, I, I'm sorry for my sins, and I ask that you forgive me. 
And in the best way that I know how, I ask you to come in and be Lord and Savior. I thank you for giving your son to die on the cross so that I could have this opportunity with all my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said, now with your head bowed, with your head still bowed and your eyes closed, if you said that prayer, would you raise your hand? Okay, and we have hands going up. Okay, great. Well, here's what happened. You can look up here now. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were his. You were his sealed. And he sends the Holy Spirit to live within you. And that's God's promise that you are his and you won't be taken away. And with that promise, right, the Bible says do not do things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Right? So let the Spirit control you. And you'll be blessed. And just like going through the fire, going in the lion's den, you will have the confidence. Or if a gunman comes up to you in your car, which I hope never happens, you will have that confidence where you can say, my Lord will protect me. Amen? Okay. At this time, I believe there are some parents who'd like to come up and do some recognition. Isn't the end of the story, right, kids? Do you know why? Because we have a video that's been taken. If you'd like to see this program again, it's playing 24-7. It's on Arbor Christian Fellowship website. It's on Facebook. It's on Rumble. It's on TikTok so, and YouTube. So this word is going out 24-7. So you kids will be preaching God's word, and you'll be getting crowns in heaven for all the work you did. Amen? Okay, parents. Thank you, Vic. Despite the darkness in our world today, to hear the kids sing the praise of God is very encouraging to my heart. Gives me hope that there's hope for us tomorrow. I just want to thank you, Miss Hilda, for this beautiful gift that you've been given and answered God's call and teaching and, and leading this ministry for all our children and inviting all kids to be a part of this ministry where they're making friendships and learning God's love and God's word and then spreading that out into the world, which is what we need more, more of. So thank you. And there are a lot of people that... A lot of leaders that we have here. Yes. That we would like to thank. And to know that this has been going on for three decades truly stirred my own soul. To know that our kids have a future. One day we'll be dead and gone. Who do we hand over to? So please think about it. When you pray every day, pray for them. They are the tomorrow. At this time, I'll call uh, Miss Carol to please come up. Miss Chelsea? Uh, Miss Lucy? Uh, Miss Rochelle? And the maestro, Miss Hilda. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> well, thank you to all and to all the parents, to all their children, to our sound people. Can you give them a hand in the back? I have to say, uh, they are miracle workers back there, and we saw a miracle because we really didn't have the sound working until probably yesterday right before the program, so that shows God's hand in that, and I thank all the parents here who bring their kids because look at these great kids. You know what? You look in this world today, there's, it's, it's a tough world out there for these kids, and we need to be praying for them every day that God will lead them, God will direct them. And get, God will keep them safe because we're living in a world that has a lot of uh, uncertainty. But you know what? With God, there is certainty and with Jesus. So you make sure that uh, you teach your kids God's word. And um, I want to give a little extra recognition. There's a, Kids, if you are moving this summer, 
Stand up, please. And these kids, some of these kids have been here a long time. We're going to miss them a lot. We might even shed a few tears. So uh, we, we pray over all these kids that wherever God say, takes you, that he will use you in a mighty way for his glory. And all the kids that are here, you have the ability to continue to, to teach other people about Jesus. But it's up to you, and it's how God's working in your hearts. So thank you to everybody. Thank you, parents, all my helpers. We have special parents that make meals for us, the Wisniewskis. They prepared dinner yesterday for all the kids. The Aurelio family, they prepared breakfast for all the kids this morning. So uh, don't think these kids are starved. We work them hard, but we also feed them. So thank you, parents, who did that. All our snack parents throughout the year. All the people that are here every Friday night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to God be the glory. Thank you. And if you're interested in this program, oh, by the way, we have Miss Carol's modeling a t-shirt. Come here, Miss Carol. She is modeling a t-shirt for Vacation Bible School. What's the date on it? You have it? Um, let's see. July. Let's see. Registration is on um, July 17th through the 21st. We have Vacation Bible School here. A lot of these kids are a part of it. It's one week of, of a lot of fun for your kids to learn about God. And so I invite you to come to that. And then, since everybody keeps asking me, when do we start again? <laughs> Kids Alive will start on August 25th. Since school is starting in this area on August 14th, we're going to give you a break, give you a couple weeks, and then we will start. So uh, come see me if you're interested in being a part of Kids Alive. We love you all. Thank you. God bless you. There's, there's two people that we miss. Parents, after we take pictures, parents of Kids Live, please stay and help us take down the set before you leave. Because otherwise, Mr. Vic and I are left alone, and it takes us forever. So we would appreciate your help. Thank you. There's two people who need special recognition. Would all of the girls and young man who was in the youth group on Friday night please stand up? Our youth group. God put it on Miss Hilda's heart that there was a need for these young children to be ministered to and to have a group to come together. Marlon and Elizabeth, would you two stand up, please? Marlon. <laughs> they were faithful enough to come every Friday night and to minister to these young ladies and gentlemen. And the best news is seven of the eight accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the eighth one had already accepted. Amen? For them and for you who accepted the Lord today, I would invite you to be baptized. You give a public testimony as to your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be blessed, and others will be blessed. God is good? And all the time? Let's join together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, this truly isn't the end of the story. Lord, we rejoice for the children and the ministry that they have brought us, for your word that they have brought us. Lord, we pray that we will take this and we will go out and tell others of the joy and spread the news of your love and offer salvation and what your son has done for us. And Lord, we pray this morning that our worship has been pleasing to you, for that is the reason we are here in church, is to worship you. Lord, send your spirit to guide and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. amen.